All right, so let's talk about how to take a pulse. And so there are different points throughout the body where you can actually feel someone's pulse or a pulsation. And so every time the heart beats, contracts, blood circulates, and at different points throughout the body, you're going to be able to feel a pulse. The normal pulse or heart rate for an adult is 60 up to 100 beats per minute. If the heart rate is greater than 100 beats per minute, that is called tachycardia. If it is less than 60 beats per minute, that is bradycardia. You would notify your nurse of any abnormals or if your patient has any additional concerns. And for CNAs, the pulse that we feel will be the radial pulse. So everyone say it with me, radial. If you come up to your patient and your patient's talking to you and they're responding, do not go for their carotid pulse. Carotid pulses are for emergencies only. And so to locate the radial pulse, um, Mrs. Loretta, is it okay if I hold your hand? Yes, ma'am. And I'm going to take this call out of the way because we won't be using it right now. The radial pulse is located in the wrist area at the base of the thumb. And with the, whenever you're taking a pulse, I want you to remember that you shouldn't be wearing gloves unless your patient's in isolation. So for your CNA examination, of course, you wash your hands, you do your introduction, but no gloves because gloves decrease the sensation and you'll be less likely to get an accurate reading. Also, you cannot take a pulse with your thumb because if you do, you'll actually be feeling your own heart rate. You'll be feeling your own pulsations. So the way that I do it is three fingers. And so research has indicated you can take a pulse with two or three fingers. Um, both Loretta and I have worked on cardiovascular units with patients who may have irregular heartbeats, etc. So for me, I've always used three fingers, but you use what's best for you. Two or three fingers are allowed. Think about circulation. If I raise this wrist up, this arm up, the blood flow is going to decrease. So whenever you're taking someone's pulse, keep the wrist down, put two or three fingers on the pulse. We have a clock over here that I'll be using at your test sites. If allowed, you can wear a watch, but usually you and your nurse, your nurse will be on one side, you'll be on the other side. And so your nurse evaluator will be counting the pulse at the same time you would. And so you and your nurse, can I please get you to stay on the other side, please? Like, right here on okay. this other side? Yes. And so would you please gather her wrist? You're going to get a wrist. All right. And so we're going to be looking at the clock that's over there. All right. And so you're going to put two fingers here. And do you feel those pulsations? Yes. All right. And so I'm going to tell you when to start, okay? Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and start now on the 12. We can start. Great job. And so at your test site, you would never know your nurse's number. The count that I received was 78. What number did you count? 78 as well. Very good. Very good. So at your test site, you can be four away from your nurse's reading. And you have to count the pulse for one full minute. So I know what they do in the real world. You'll count for 15 seconds and multiply the number by four, or maybe 30 seconds and multiply by two. But when you're testing to become a CNA, you want to do it for the full minute. And if you lose count, or if you feel that you have maybe the pulse isn't as strong in one wrist as it would be any other you can tell your nurse that hey I need to start over or may I start over you can also ask your nurse if you can switch extremities and so don't forget to document your findings for your state of Florida CNA exam usually the pulse is by itself in the real world we can do pulse and respirations but for the test you'd have to do a whole introduction take the pulse document the pulse in your skill by giving the patient a call bill, making sure the bed is back low, etc. cetera. Um, don't forget to wash your hands if I didn't say that. <laughs> and then if you had to do respirations, you'd have to knock on the door and start that process all over again. So I just did the pulse skill. I would make sure I tightened up everything that I documented. I washed my hands and I opened that curtain at the end. I would give the patient back their call bill, ask if they have any questions. And then I would be done with this skill. I would then have to knock on the door, come back again in order Order to do respiration. So that's what we do for the Florida CNA examination. If it's different in your state, please let us know. Again, this is Eunice and this is Loretta. And we are here at Florida Training Academy. So we look forward to seeing you in the next video, which will be about respirations. All right.